uh, CT scan studies and MRI studies and other. So as I was saying that uh, he is involved in tele-reporting of various CT and MRI from Jaipur only uh, at the Bhopal Center. He also has done uh, his fellowship at Mount Sinai Hospital and he did his uh, clinical observership at Washington DC Hospital. So. And uh, presently, he is a, whole, uh, is a consultant radiologist at, uh, in a private setup, which is called MK Diagnostic. So we welcome uh, Dr. Aslam, and I would invite Dr. Aslam to kindly share his presentation and start the presentation. Please go. Thank you, sir, for the kind introduction. And the laptop is just about to start. So before we start this presentation, I just want to have an orientation with the audience as well. Are we... Are we all familiar with the PACS system? Can anyone tell me what is PACS, PAC is? Right? So PACS is a recently developed technology. It is called Picture Archiving and Communication System. So the entire ideology has now shifted to PACS. Now, for whom the PACS is used for? PACS is basically not used for the radiologist. It is, it is basically for the clinicians. Because when you operate, you need to have certain managed measurements like when you do renal transplant, you need to have certain artery measurements, pain measurements. So this is what the PACS is used for. And five years down the lane, we'll see entire Jaipur converting to PACS. In 1985, the Mount Sinai Hospital become flimless. So since 1985, there is no, not even a single flim that is given to patients. Everything is on the laptop, desktop or the mobiles. So can I have one of the residents number? Anyone? I'll make it interactive, sir. Yeah, sure. Please. Otherwise, what will happen is I'll finish my, finish my presentation and you'll not be able to gain anything. So, can we have one of the residence number? Just a second. I'll share your case of renal cell carcinoma. You can circulate that case among your friends. It will work on your mobile. Do the coronal imaging. Do the MIP imaging. You know what is MIP? Okay. Maximum intensity projection. You do the MIP imaging, do the SAS sections, and just go through the image and let me know what are your findings. This is a pathologist ka case. Hai. As incidental finding a pathologist working with me at MK. Ah, please tell me another. Double nine. Double nine. First, have you seen text message? Just click on the link and try to scroll the image. So my second question is, are you aware of the CT not me? Everyone? Very thorough with the CT not me? So 5-10 seconds my puri CT not me by device karunga and then we move off to renal tumors. So major challenge is how we are going to schedule this teaching courses. We'll start with the CT not me. I'll teach you the renal tumors. Basically solid tumors, then cystic tumors, then we go to Bosnian classification, how to follow up the tumors, and then we go to MRI not me and MRI tumors. And then there is called sorry for given opportunity next time. I'll also like to teach on the multi-parametric prostate. So MR will be very difficult because in MR the everything runs on the sequence. So if you have an orientation with the sequence, what we see on what sequence? Like there is a T1, there is a T2, it's a fluid attenuation recovery sequence player. 
then there's a fat suppression sequence, then there's a BWI, then there's an ADC, and every sequence has a physics behind it. So once you are thorough with the sequence, what you are seeing in what sequence, it is very, very easy to interpret it because everything is Excel, not me. If you have it on the pen drive, you can put it in the cell phone. Shall I transfer that over the world as well? No, no, it's fine if it's working. Just uh, join us with the, uh, your, with the link. <laughs> with the link, you have to join this one that I have sent. In the meantime, uh, any of the faculty members or residents, if you want to comment on something. So I think uh, it's a real good thing that we have Dr. Aslam with us and is uh, telling us the, uh, the latest thing about how to read the CT scan. Uh, and we will start with the renal tumors. And he will deal with the CT scan of uh, the renal tumors and MRI of renal tumors. And sometime later, we would also like to discuss the multi-parametric MRI of uh, prostatic malignancy. So are you all aware with the concept of Hall's field unit, HU unit? Yeah, yeah. So yes. HU of blood is what? Hmm? How much? Huh? Fluid kitna hai, air kitna hota hai, fat kitna hota hai. Fat is? Yes, okay. And air, metal, calcium, and hemorrhage now. So basically, we characterize the tissue characteristic based upon the Hounsfield unit in the CT. Similarly, we also do do a similar way on MR. So we are starting with the CT. A quick revision on the CT anatomy. Share your presentation first. Yes, minimize it and then share your presentation. It's going to be minimized. Okay. Okay. Share your presentation. Yes. 
start coming. So, yeah, perfect. What has changed around the world is even in the MBBS curriculum, now they are teaching Excel a lot to me. So, the early view. So this is a frontal projection and initially before the before we started using this non-ionic contrast, we need to have a fasting of seven to eight hours. But these days we hardly require any fasting. We inject it and there is a protocol. You know what is CT urography? Can you explain the protocol? So in NCCD, what all we see? Hmm. There are certain things which need to be made sure that we are seeing on the NCCD. NCCD is a non-contrast scan. It's a three-second scan. Radiation dose should be kept low. MA should be kept low. KV should be kept low so that radiation dose is low. In the NCCD, what we are going to see is we are going to see the calcium. We are going to see the hemorrhage and we are going to see the fat. So these are the three things we need to make sure whenever we are seeing a kidney and diagnosis a renal tumor, we should see these three components. Then we go to a which phase? Okay, arterial phase. That is for angiography. We'll see the vessels. We see the renal artery. Then after arterial phase, what else we see? Huh? Corticomedullary phase. It is scanned in which interval? How many seconds later after injecting the contrast? 35 to? Okay, 25 to 40 seconds, but I give you a upper hand in this. It's fine. We can take it between 25 to 40 seconds. What we are going to see in the corticomedullary phase? There are certain tumors which they are in medulla, which will be hidden in the corticomedullary phase. So every phase has an importance. If we want to differentiate the cortex in medulla, we want to have a corticomedullary phase. After that, which phase we take? It is how many seconds later? And after nephrographic phase, then it is used for to see the ureter, to trace the ureter. So pelvic collection system basically. So if you are if you want to diagnose an RCC, you can get rid of this excretory phase. It is not required because RCC is uh, is almost outside the kidney. It, makes the contour of the kidney deformed. So it's an anatomy, axial anatomy. So we are moving from diaphragm to top. This is the right, vent right ventricle. This is the right atrium. This is the IBC and the aorta. So all the black which we are seeing are the lungs. 
when we go down we start seeing the hepatic veins this is the ibc and this is the aorta we can see the left branch of portal vein this is the left lobe of liver even the liver has a segments this is the stomach so oral contrast was given but when we do a renal protocol study will not give a oral contrast why what sometimes there is a bean hardening artifact so when bowel loop is very close to the ureter the bean hardening artifact will not allow us to see the ureters that is the only reason we don't give oral contrast what was the effect that you said the beam hardening artifact beam hardening beam beam b e a m beam oh, hardening beam hard. we are further going down so this is this this is a mass is this a mass it is written it is pylorus but Pylo. uh, the point i want to make here is whenever you are seeing excel excel images always look the same image on the coronal section as well and go further down it will make the things clear so this is a left kidney coming this is a spleen this is a splenic vein now this part is spleenic flexure of colon we are about to see the second part of duodenum optimal preparation of bowel loop is done we have to recognize the ileum and jejunum with the folds they have so will it be possible to see all this without contrast oral contrast the bowel loop will be the bowel loop it is possible to see without oral contrast but sometimes uh, what happens is if you want to see inside the bowel yeah. so there are some polyps some in, uh, intrinsic tumor which will miss if you don't have an oral contrast so this is what section sagittal coronal coronal sections be a little loud somebody asking a question loud so that everybody can hear So this is the coronal section. We are going from front to back, and when we are going back towards back, we can see the small ball well opacified. We can see the bladder. Usually, bladder should be well visible. Okay, so that's you can even after the exercise section, you just go from above to down, but. from front to back also you can see so as i said the three things are very important at nccd when it, you do a renal protocol you start with nccd you can identify one is the calcification second is the fat content and third is hemorrhage so a benign tumor which has a lipid content high can be actually visualized on a cd right ncc similarly calcification benign lesions will usually have what type of calcification will have a thin peripheral rim of calcification and malignancy usually has a chunky type of calcification triple calcification right similarly you can We have a hemorrhagic renal cyst, which is a high density renal cyst, which can be visualized on an NCCT. And if you are not doing NCCT and straight away going with contrast CT, sometimes you can just misinterpret as a lesion or a malignancy. So it's always good to have an NCCT film. At least these features can be identified on NCCT. So sometimes when you are doing an abdominal scan and there are incidental lomas. So incidentally, we find something. So, what scan protocol we are doing as a radiologist? We do the unenhanced CT scan, and we straight away go to nephrographic phase. Only two scan protocol, and we end the scan. But moment we have to do a dedicated study, we have to follow all these. Angiographic phase is another plus phase which we we usually don't take. So, uh, can I just interrupt? So, arterial phase uh, would be important for us. Uh, what are the things that we can get on arterial? for a tumor 
Suppose there is a small tumor. We want to do a partial uh, nephrectomy in that patient. We need to know the arteries around it. Right? We need to know the whole arterial tree. So arterial phase is very important for us in a case of renal tumor. Right? So very simple concept. Kabhi bhi hypervascular mass dekhna. If you want to see a hypervascular mass, you want to see a arterial phase as well. So this is the image which is clearly depositing that what you can miss on the corticomedullary phase. So this is a corticomedullary phase. This lesion is completely missed on this image. When you do a nephrographic phase, you can recognize it. So this is the importance. And this we have already covered. In 25 to 40 seconds, we do a corticomedullary phase. In around 80 to 120 seconds, we do a nephrographic phase. And after 8 minutes, we can take an excretory phase. The Hounsville unit. What we see on the CT, already covered. Acute blood, make sure this acute blood looks from 60 to 90 HU. This we should all know, ki acute blood should be readily identified and fat should be readily identified. So how do we classify the tumors? We can classify it as a tumors in adult pediatric and tumors in newborn. Radiologically, it is not always simple as sir said. A very subtle sign how we catch the tumors, how we identify the tumors. So we identify the tumors based upon the pediatric or adult based on the age group. We identify the tumors based on the location. We identify the tumor based on the subtle radiological characteristic. So I have classified the tumor into renal parenchymal tumor, mesenchymal, and renal pelvis and secondary tumors in four categories. So these are the renal parenchymal tumors. This most common is renal cell carcinoma. Sometimes it is very difficult to differentiate between renal cell carcinoma and oncocytoma. And means we do a biopsy or FNAC and then we make the tumor. Is, I think you go for a partial. So the renal parenchymal tumors can work. Nephroblastomatosis. Okay. Clear cell sarcoma, reptoid tumor of kidney, multilocular cystic nephroma, and adenoma. So mesenchymal tumors, very important to differentiate. Angiomyolipoma, you all can characteristically identify on the ultrasound and the CT as well. Then there are renal pelvis tumor. In the benign tumor, it comes a papilloma. Transition carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and collecting, collecting that carcinoma. The other secondary tumors can be metastasis and lymphoma. Metastasis, you have to look upwards and downwards. You will find a primary tumor elsewhere in the body. In the lymphoma, very characteristic feature, very robust appearance. A mass, mass will be visible that is displacing the entire kidney. So renal cell carcinoma, the moon tumor which comes, it is derived from the renal epithelium. It is the most common male is to female predilection 3 to 1. Clinical picture, you already know it better than me as a radiologist. There is a macroscopic hematuria, plant pain and palpable mass. This is a very gross TNM staging. I think you all are aware. Entirely based upon the size, emitter. And T3 is a tumor thrombus ectopic phase or a corticomedullary phase. You enhances the portal vein and the arterial artery as well. When there is tumor extension. Please, we'll see on the IVB. Can you? Can anyone explain this IVB? Can you lesion here? Do it, Alex. Off. Besides lower Alex, do you think is it clearly delineated? Yes. 
whenever you are seeing an IP, IDP, just look for the normal sequences first. So normally the callus should be well delineated and the left side we can see the upper pole, middle pole and the lower pole as well. On in the right side, the lower pole calluses are distorted, they are pushed up. There must be something below it that is causing the distortion. The ureter are well opacified. There is no filling defect in the ureter or no mass effect in the ureter. So there could be mass in the lower pole of the right kidney causing distortion of the calluses. Mukesh Kumar. This is an ultrasound image. I have made an arrow for the same patient. There is a hyperechoic. Hyperechoic means a bright. This is a hyperechoic mass in the lower pole. So what does it mean? Hyperechoic? <laughs> Increased fat content. Yes. So it could be what? Angiomyelitis. But before we make sure we may we come to a diagnosis, we go for a CT. So in the CT, the enhancing mass should be heterogeneous. It is usually heterogeneous because there are component of blood. There is a necrosis. There will be a contour deformity. The ten percent will be the phase of enhancement. Contrast the RCT show variable enhancement. There are subtypes of RCC. Enhancement is list. Enhancement we value then RCD. And we see the increase as low as 10 to 15 HU. Upon the enhancement, we come to a hypovascular RCC, which are very difficult to differentiate from. So which other lesions are hypovascular? Mm -hmm. And a small RCC, how do you differentiate? It is a RCC or Yes, exactly, oncocytoma. Or even a metastatic lesion would be hypovascular in comparison to RCD. Right? So RCD shows variable enhancement. The cortico medullary phase is also the best for assessing vascular anatomy. The nephrographic phase we discussed, taken between 80 to 180 seconds is the most sensitive phase for detection of abnormal contrast enhancement. Excretive phase is less worth, but importance is assessing the collecting system anatomy. So, so here, I, if I just interrupt here, sometimes what happens by, in the RCC is kind of a locally advanced or it is if it's infiltrating into the pelvic collision system, which will be identified on the excretory phase. So you can know exactly whether it is infiltrating in the pelvic collision system. And sometimes also even this uh, small hypervascular RCC can be detected on uh, excretory phase. Also. So I think excretory phase is also probably a Important is the renal protocol of. Uh, so it is very important. So there's a concept called ball and bean concept. Very important when we make a diagnosis, when there is a ball shaped deformity, the ball concept, we think it is an RCC. It is deforming the contour of the kidney. When there's a bean shaped deformity, it is extending into the calluses. And like a bean, it is distortion of causing distortion of calluses. Entering the collecting system, we think it is a TCC, transitional cell carcinoma. So, even Sir rightly said, the excretory phase is very important. Sometimes you may miss out some lesions, but when, when you're very sure that you have to diagnose only the RCC, the lesion is only in the renal kidney and it is not extending into the pelvis and collecting system, you can obviate the excretory system. So this is another lesion. An NN CT scan. This is hyper. Be allowed louder. It's a hyperdense lesion. The HU is 70 HU. Contrast enhancement on administration of contrast. The HU has increased. It is a 43 year old old woman having a RCC. Then there is a, this lesion on the lower pole. Again, corticomedullary phase showing the central necrotic component.
so this is another sub type when there is a it process hemorrhage on solid component hyper intense or hypo intense when it shows a prompt contrast enhancement then we are very much sure that is a rcc so i have straight away taken the t1 contrast images this is the lesion here showing abrupt contrast enhancement another lesion on the lower pole deforming the contour and showing contrast enhancement on angiography 95% of tumor are hypervascular so this is angiographic image so adenoma it's best described as adenocarcinoma with no metastatic potential usually detected at autopsy this is a ct contrast image in a 60 year old female with a hematuria showing hypo attenuating solid expensile mass on histology it came out to be metanephric adenoma inside solid mass ha huh. what i mean about expensile is see this is a this is a border of the kidney now here you see the border of the kidney it is expanding So it's a expensile mass showing heterogeneous enhancement. यहाँ से ना ये cortex break होना चाहिए था बाहर निकलना चाहिए था. Then we call it exophytic. अंदर से बाहर निकल रहा है cortex intact है. We call it expensile. हाँ बारे में it is increasing in size. Increasing in size. Yes, a term. It's not a dynamic. Increasing in size. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. From in the surgery, you must have read this is a pulse attend and expense side. Uh, like, ah. like hematoma after renal injury. If there is a expense side hematoma, uh, that means that similarly pulse attend is when you can just feel the pulsation also. So now we move to on go side to ma. Incidence is five percent of the renal tumor. Although the majority of lesions are well differentiated and benign, these tumor need to be resected because of their malignant potential. And sometimes we are we are not able to differentiate between RCC very operatively. Unfortunately, the imaging appearance of oncocytoma is difficult to distinguish from RCC, and as such, they are usually resected. The helpful criteria is sharply hypotense central scar, which is not always present. so it's non enhancing present only in third of the cases and there is a presence of calcification as well so this is the lesion this is a central scar which we were talking about the cg contrast shows a large well defined mass in the right flank the mass is solid and enhances the central stellate scar is present this is a scar again you can see oncocytoma So when the scar is not there, we cannot really we cannot differentiate as a radiologist whether it's a oncocytoma or a RCC. Another image on the MR. This is a 64 old man showing a central scar, which shows a hyper intensity here. A CT contrast image. The lower pole showing a mass with the central hypotense area. and this we have a small lesion here as well so rcc and oncocytoma we are trying to differentiate based on the imaging characteristic we are trying to collect the evidences if we see anything else the central scar is one of the helpful criteria now from there we move on to wilms tumor it is usually a pediatric tumor third most common malignant tumor in children based after the leukemia and brain tumor so clinically you feel pain and staging this do same as of what we do as rcc i'll show you the ultrasound ct and mr images 
so there is a large mass here on the ultrasound and it shows heterogeneity ultrasound what we describe is hyperechoic that is bright hypoechoic that is black and heterogeneous means mixed of both the things so we have a heterogeneous areas in between there are small hypoechogenicities on ct is a large heterogeneous soft tissue density mass mean is 12 cm there are areas of cystic areas that may be hemorrhage that may be necrosis you will say that hemorrhage is always bright so why i said cystic areas hemorrhage has a characteristic time of appearance so when the hemorrhage is old it look as a blackish thing on the ultrasound there are frequent areas of calcification there are areas of fat, fat density region and enhancement is also patchy so this is the image showing the wilms tumor in a 4 year old boy with an abdominal mass the ct scan shows a left renal mass with heterogeneous enhancement there are multiple hepatic metastases and when we go higher up in the ct scan we can see a portal vein thrombosis as well portal vein is not enhancing the way it has to enhance see the aorta enhancement in the aorta there is no enhancement in the portal vein another image showing these are the cystic areas and this is the enhancing part another patient this this tumor is causing compression of the kidney towards medially mri may what we can say is it looks hypointense on t1 hyperintense on t2 and on contrast there is a heterogeneous enhancement because of mix of all the components so what do you think <coughs> this tumor is which is shifting the kidney medially and you are thinking this is a kind of a hypodense lesion can you go back to the previous Yes, yeah. Uh, we are not getting this. This will come. It's, it takes a slightly delay. Will come. So, what do you think it is? That there is a tumor, large tumor, which is shifting the kidney medially, not actually arising from the kidney. Either epithelial mass or even adrenal mass, either lipoma. Because there is such a big tumor, that it, we have a case also in our. Not just not coming for. Sir, phone is charging, isn't it? There is some delay in this. इमेज ऑफ अम्स ट्यूमर इन थ्री इयर ओल्ड बॉय विद इन अबडोमल मास दिस इज अटोलिनियम एनहेंस कोरोनल फैट सप्रेस्ट इवन इमेज इट शोज अ लार्ज वेल डिफाइंड मास and in the between there are multiple hypotenses hemorrhagic foci so differential diagnosis should be from neuroblastoma how we differentiate neuroblastoma tends to happen in the younger age less than 2 years origin films from the kidney and neuroblastoma from the retroperitoneal neural crest renal mass effect film shows extens intrinsic mass effect neuroblastoma shows external compression so when sir said ki what else it could be it could be neuroblastoma as well calcification it is more in neuroblastoma vessel involvement invasion in wilms and encasement in neuroblastoma so you understand the difference between invasion and encasement right from external it will encase and from internal it will invade the so margin are well circumscribed in wilms and poorly marginated in neuroblastoma neuro nephroblastomatosis it refers to diffuse or multifocal involvement of the kidney with neurogenic rest present in 30% of unilateral wilms tumor and 100% of the bilateral wilms tumor 
nephrogenic rest can be classified into perilobar rest and intralobar rest intralobar is more associated with the wilms tumor on ultrasound it will look as a hypoechoic nodules on ct nephrogenic rest appear as a low attenuation peripheral nodules with poor enhancement relative to that of adjacent normal renal parenchyma so this is diffuse diffuse nephroblastomatosis a child with a flank mass and hemiatrophy nephroblastomatosis foci the surface of kidney may reveal abnormality here this is a ct image nephroblastomosis nephroblastomatosis and 16 year old boy with abnormal mass ct contrast shows so this is a uh, plain radiograph you can see a bulge here you can see a bulge here you need to see what is inside this inside the ct scan the ct contrast shows large homogeneous wilms tumor superimposed on the background of multiple peripheral neurogenic rest this is the arrow head head showing the nephrogenic rest and these are the wilms tumor so when there is a bilateral wilms tumor there is a 100% involvement of nephroblastomatosis another case on mr the nodule shows a low signal on t1 and nodule may demonstrate low signal on uh, low signal intensity foci and t2 as well there is no enhancement as what we see on the rct rct means there is abrupt enhancement on on t1 contrast in this case there will be no enhancement so this is a t1 contrast image we completely miss this lesion on the t1 and t2 on contrast enhanced images showing foci of nephroblastomatosis there is a non enhancing lesion here which were not detectable in native t1 and t2 another case showing the same so this is a mass here then there is a mesoblastic nephroma hematoma it's a most common solid renal mass in the neonate uncommon in children and rare in adults the tumor is benign usually identified within the first 3 months of life with 95 90% of the cases discovered within first year of life there is a slight male preponderance so on radiologically we will see a solid very large intradenal mass in neonate imaging studies show a large solid intradenal mass that typically involve the renal sinus mass replaces a large portion of renal parenchyma and may contain cyst hemorrhage necrotic lesion local infiltration of perinephric tissue is common So this is mesoblastic nephroma in a five week old male. So this is the mass lesion here. On ultrasound, it is showing the heterogeneity with the central hypoechoic areas. Then there is a clear cell sarcoma. It represents the six percent of all pediatric renal tumor. Highly highly malignant. Worse prognosis than Wilms tumor. There is a strong propensity for the skeletal metastasis. Cannot be distinguished from Wilms tumor on imaging alone. So this is a case of clear cell sarcoma in 13, 13 month old girl with abdominal mass. There is an extensive central necrosis. Then there is a rhabdoid tumor of the kidney. It consists of two percent childhood renal tumor, poor prognosis, common metastasis to lung, liver, and brain, and associated with primary brain tumors of neuroectodermal origin, including medulloblastoma, ependymoma, glioma, pinet. Difficult to distinguish from Wilms tumor by imaging alone. So I am also talking about the limitations where we are, when we describe the mass and we say we don't want to make a diagnosis. We mean it. We cannot make the diagnosis. If at all you ask a radiological opinion, what it could be, we'll go for a pediatric. We'll go for an age group. We'll go for the enhancement characteristic and associated features. And nothing more we can tell. So this is a rhabdoid tumor in the eight month old boy with a hematuria. then there is a multilocular cystic nephroma is a congenital renal lesion characterized by large greater than 10 cm cystic spaces so it happens in a pediatric age group occurs in ch children aged 2 months to 4 years with 75% male predilection and it also happen in adults when the age is more than 40 years of age in adult it has a female predilection differential diagnosis of the pediatric renal masses on contrast on ct contrast shows a well defined intradenal multilocular mass that compress or displace adjacent renal parenchyma septation enhanced but cysts do not 
So this is these are the septations which are enhancing. Then then adenoma. Adenoma ka sabse uh, important feature hai. Ye juxta glomerular hota hai. It is a small lesion, a hypovascular mass. When we talk about what could be the hypovascular mass, then adenoma can be hypovascular mass. How we make a diagnosis? How we make a diagnosis? How do you confirm the diagnosis of uh, juxta glomerular adenoma? Why? Right? Estimation of so on clinical side you will find the hypertension. On imaging side it's a juxta glomerular and hypovascular, and then biochemical. biochemical study you can find out. So this is a juxta glomerular renal cell tumor. So if you don't give us a history that patient is having a hypertension, we will not able to make a diagnosis. Quickly cover, na? I'll just show you the images. Yeah, because the OT is the OT is planned. So, in myolipoma, you already know. And your myolipoma can be associated with the tuberous sclerosis. We have a case of tuberous sclerosis, typical. Okay. Yeah, we will show it sometime. Cortical tubers with into myolipoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all is it's adenomas, patient, and all typical cases and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the history of a lesion in the brain. All, on ultrasound, the fat looks bright. So on ultrasound, this is a fat angiomyolipoma. On CD, the fat looks black. The minus attenuation value will confirm. This is exophytic and fat density lesion. Another exophytic and fat density lesion. This are, oh, these all are angiomyolipomas. This is multiple AML in tuberous fluorosis. These are the cortical tubers which Sir was talking about. The differential diagnosis could be fat containing renal masses in AML with RCC. In the RCC, the invasion of perirenal fat or intratumoral metaplasia into fatty marrow. And in one third of cases, the RCC is less than 3 cm. Lipoma, no different on CT to AML. If how we differentiate AML and lipoma on the CT, we cannot differentiate. Then there are cases like liposarcoma, which also contain fat. Pilms tumor also contains fat. Sometimes oncocytoma also contains fat. Teratoma very rarely contains fat. So this is a case of xenthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. There is a replacement of renal parenchyma with lipid filled macrophages. We'll see the female with diabetes and a large tag on calculus in the collecting duct. So these are the lipid filled macrophages. Macrophages in xenthogranulomatous pyelonephritis, and this is the calculi. Another case: a calculi and fat densities areas. Xenthogranulomatous pyelonephritis, very clear diagnosis. Renal pelvis tumor, benign may can be papilloma, TCC, squamous cell carcinoma, and collecting duct carcinoma. So we will discuss about the TCC first. We discussed about the ball and bean concept. In concept applies to TCC. The inverted papillomas has no malignant potential. 20% are associated with the uroepithelial malignancy elsewhere, most commonly in bladder. TCC is the most common tumor of the renal pelvis, more in males. We can have a IVP, CTU and MRU. They can be irregular filling defect. Usually the what pinpoints to TCC is the soft tissue density. They are usually centered on the renal pelvis. And they are less enhancing. So ultrasound sometimes most of the radiologists miss TCC on the ultrasound because when we see ultrasound in a fatty patient, it's very difficult to see. It is a normal collecting duct or collecting duct with a very slight echos. These slight echos represent the mass in the collecting duct in the calyces. So TCC of the renal pelvic 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 calyceal system in a 58 year old man. The sonogram showing the renal sinus echo, which is intermediate in echogenicity. The same patient, when we do an IVP, we, we can get a bean deformity concept. The be, uh, internal calluses are getting deformed. Then a CD, this is an NNN CD, this is a contrast NN CD, and this is the excretory phase CD. So this is a lesion here, TCC. Another image, this is a lesion here, soft tissue density lesion. Corticomedullary phase. Where is the lesion? 
राइट और लेफ्ट लेफ्ट अच्छा तो राइट 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 या दिस 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 इज़ 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 द द द लीजन 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 हियर हियर में एज वेल चलता है बट पीपल आर गेटिंग ठीक है ऑन दिस इमेज सी दिस इज द लीजन हियर सिक्योरिटी फेस में आपको यूनिटर का स्टेटस भी करना and uh, what you said about the pack system and all those things i think if we can start in our own uh, department also it would be really good because otherwise what we do is we ask the residents to go there and see in the console uh, the whole thing because sometimes the things are not very clear on films so i think that would be a very good thing and if we can uh, incorporate this in our daily kind of uh, routine so that would be wonderful And I was not sure what kind of audience I am dealing with, so I took the CT not me as well. But what I can make out from after this class is, uh, you will be more, you should be more focused on the MR imaging now. There is a chemical shift imaging, then there is a spectroscopic imaging, then MR. So uh, another class will be parametric MRI because right, it, it is so often done because there are so many patients of prostate malignancy carcinoma, and routinely it is being done. Uh, in So I think that would be also very useful for the residents and uh, even the faculty. So thank you, Dr. Aslam. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, coming today in our teaching session. Uh, and uh, we would look forward to more of such more of such uh, teaching sessions with you because uh, this is a very important thing and a learning thing for our both faculty and the residents. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir, for inviting me. It was wonderful inter interacting with you all and. When we start a next class, अगर मैं आपको कुछ MR का एक दो input दे रहा हूँ, teach me something from your surgical side as well. So we'll incorporate that too, sir. Right, that's good. Uh, I learned my needle uh, transplant imaging from Sadasuki, sir. I was writing a lot many things. He came to my console and said, "Beta, I don't want all these things. What you are writing? I want a particular these these items in my report. If you can do that, that is perfect. Else, don't report." I was in my first year of residency, and sir taught me everything how to report better in the urology. Right, right. So we have so lot of problems. Dr. Aslam was in Mahatma Gandhi Hospital. Uh, at that time, Dr. Govind, you might also be there. Yes. Yes. Acha, you have met already. Yes. Yes. Acha, acha, okay. So we used to call him for this. Check if he can. That's great. That's great. So thank you very much. And.